Across southern Latin America, the names of the victims of military dictatorships are etched in memorials. As well as a crackdown in their own countries, in the 1970s, the military also shared information to hunt down opponents across national borders. They said it was a war on terror. It was called Plan Condor. An old car workshop in the south of Buenos Aires in Argentina. It's now a museum. It was once a secret detention center. The sound from the train tracks opposite helped survivors later identify its location. Amongst the victims here, Argentines, Uruguayans, Bolivians, Chileans and Cubans. This was the center for Plan Condor in Argentina. It's called Automotores Oleti. Cuando alquilan los represores se presentan como personas común y corriente, como empresarios y que la vivienda y todo el sector de abajo va a ser utilizado como depósito de mercadería en tránsito. En realidad es un eufemismo, eh, digamos 40 años después está bien claro que el depósito era un depósito humano, la mercadería en tránsito eran seres humanos y, y, y el tránsito era el tránsito a la muerte, ¿no? de alguna manera. Han sido muy irónicos y, y muy sádicos en su terminología, ¿no? esto que hablábamos hoy, eh, hasta el día de hoy los represores están muriendo muchos de viejo y siguen con el sadismo de no contarnos a los familiares qué es lo que hicieron con, con los restos de, de los cuerpos de nuestra familia. Five members of Ricardo Maggio's family would disappear during the dictatorship in Argentina. Today, he's the coordinator at this museum. We don't talk about the tormentos that the repressors have done, but we still remember that in that framework of the destruction of the human condition, we couldn't break the human condition. An estimated 300 people were brought here. Many were foreign nationals and many were never seen again. The evidence of what happened here is still on view. Maggio lowered the front gate to show bullet holes from the shootout when one group of detainees tried to escape. In 2013, a historic trial began in Buenos Aires. 25 former military officers accused of over 100 crimes of kidnapping, torture and murder. The day the trial started, there was a bomb threat at this former detention center in the city. A stark warning from those who oppose investigations into the past. Plan Condor was the military dictatorship's hunt of leftist organizations and urban guerrilla groups that were coordinating across the region. Many of its victims were in Argentina, but to find out more, I traveled to the country where Plan Condor was conceived. 40 years ago, representatives of military dictatorships from across the region were invited to Santiago, Chile. Head of the Chilean Secret Service, Manuel Contreras, hosted five days of meetings. On the agenda, setting up the intelligence service to combat left-wing guerrilla groups deemed a threat to national security. The context was the Cold War. Military dictatorships had seized power in the region and employed any method necessary to combat the perceived communist threat. The invitation makes it clear that all countries were welcome to take part in this operation on one simple condition that they were not Marxist. It was at this meeting that the plan, or the operation, was named after the host country's bird of prey, the Condor. Contreras, who organized this meeting, died earlier this year. He was serving over 500 years for crimes while he was head of the Chilean intelligence service. To a local news channel shortly before his death, he showed no remorse for the techniques his service used to chase opponents. ¿Se arrepiente de algo? De nada. ¿Tiene que pedir perdón a 40 años? A Dios solamente le pido perdón. A nadie más.
Just a few blocks away from La Moneda Palace in the very heart of Santiago, students and office workers walk by what was once a detention centre. Now it is a museum, a place for memory. It takes the name of the street. It belonged to the Socialist Party, but was taken over by the military and converted into a detention and torture centre. Here, a visitor is moved to song. It's a famous song for the victims of military rule in the region, called Una Cancion Possible, a possible song. Later that day, we met another woman moved by the experience of visiting this place. Laura Elgueta is one of the hundreds of witnesses who gave testimony in the Plan Condor trial in Buenos Aires. We met at this former detention centre in Santiago. No me acuerdo por qué, pero pasaba por acá afuera, porque le habían dicho que era en esta cuadra. Laura's family left Chile as exiles in the early 1970s. They moved to Argentina when she was just 15 years old. Exactamente al año siguiente, en julio del año 1977, fui secuestrada yo junto a una cuñada que estaba conmigo en ese entonces y somos llevadas a un centro de detención. Ese centro, después de los años, pudimos identificarlo sin ningún lugar a dudas, era el, el Atlético. Fuimos llevadas al Atlético, fuimos recibidas por chilenos, fuimos interrogadas en Argentina por chilenos y argentinos. Y en esa ocasión se nos dijo claramente que a mi hermano Luis lo habían traído acá a Chile porque tenía muchas cuentas que pagar. Laura and her family have no information about what happened to her brother Luis, one of Plan Condor's many victims. Eran jóvenes idealistas, jóvenes democráticos, jóvenes que creían en la libertad, creían en la justicia, creían en la igualdad y tenían ideales. Muchos de ellos eran personas de izquierda, efectivamente lo eran. Y nosotros, como sus familias, nos sentimos muy orgullosos de eso. Laura is awaiting the outcome of the trial in Buenos Aires in the coming months, but she also gave testimony in another separate trial many years ago for one of Plan Condor's first and most notorious crimes. In 1974, before Plan Condor was formally established at the meeting in Santiago, this car bomb in Buenos Aires killed the former Chilean army general. Carlos Prats, his wife, was also in the car. The process that se vivió in the government from the 70s to 73 was a process of revolution internal in Chile, of ideas, of proposals, social ideas. Angelica Prats is one of the daughters of the former army general. Their family campaigned for justice for decades. And the army had to take a position y que las Fuerzas Armadas eran respetuosas de la Constitución y, por lo tanto, esa era su eh, misión en ese momento. General Prats had been army chief for Salvador Allende's government. He resigned in August 1973. His replacement was Augusto Pinochet. Weeks later... On September the 11th, Pinochet led the military coup. To this day, every year, Chile commemorates Latin America's 9-11. A trial in 2004 sentenced a military officer in Buenos Aires for the murder of General Prats and his wife. Y nos dábamos cuenta que eh, claramente, si bien es cierto, había sido planificado aquí en Chile, tenía que tener una conexión con Argentina que facilitó la forma de eh, ejecutar el crimen. Across Chile are former detention centers. They're solemn places.
This is a country that is still wrestling with its past. For many, the reality of Chile is a legacy of military rule. Defenders of the dictatorship, however, believe the country was saved. Here, student protests are commonplace. They want the rehaul of an education system that Pinochet's rule left and that furthers inequality. But here they also protest the police response to their demonstrations. One of their fellow students had been left in a coma after a clash with police when we filmed here. A reminder of the country's violent recent past. At this march, their demand was simple. Stop killing us. Adolfo Pérez Esquivel won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1980 for his work defending human rights. He was arrested many times in Argentina, but also in Brazil, making him too a victim of Plan Condor. En la prisión no me dejaban apoyar en la pared, tenía que estar parado todo el tiempo, horas y horas. Pero eh, que yo no los podía ver eran tres interrogadores. Claro. ¿Los, ¿Los tres eran brasileños, los, los policiales, los, los oficiales? No, uno era argentino. Por la terminología que usaba, eh, era argentino. He explained how he was asked to identify photos of community leaders from Venezuela, from Paraguay, and from Chile. In his 80s, Perez Esquivel is still a busy activist. But Plan Condor is not only shocking in the number of victims and the geographic reach, but also the sheer audacity of some of the crimes committed. Like General Prats in Buenos Aires, former Chilean minister Orlando Letelier was killed in a car bomb. The Letelier case is also notorious. The former Allende minister was killed in Washington DC in 1976. He had been campaigning for the United States to drop its support of Chile. Earlier this year, declassified documents from the United States proved Pinochet's responsibility for the bomb in the US Capitol. It also shows that Plan Condor was operating with the knowledge of the United States. Letelier is one of the highest profile victims of Plan Condor. So too, the former president of Bolivia, Juan José Torres, who was murdered on the say-so of the Bolivian ex-dictator, General Hugo Banza. Torres represents a very big threat to the Banza regime. That's why in the context of this criminal organization, the Condor operation, there was an agreement between the local dictatorship, the Argentine dictatorship, and the Bolivian dictatorship to uh, accomplish this order made in La Paz. Martin Sivak is the author of the book that shed light on the murder of a former head of state. The crime took place just outside Buenos Aires. The US was very concerned that's why in the case of Bolivia, where Che Guevara started his guerrilla four years before, and Chile were two leading cases where, where the US wanted to stop this turn to the left. I'm not saying that the US, that, that the coup d'etat happened because the US organized. On the contrary, I would say that the local, the national elites of Bolivia and Chile are key to understand. However, we should take or to bring into the picture the fact of this economic aid that the U.S. gave both to Pinochet and to Banzer in Bolivia. Banzer in Bolivia was just one of the dictators in power in the region, along with Pinochet in Chile, Videla in Argentina, Stroessner in Paraguay, Bordaberry in Uruguay, all of which led to tens of thousands of deaths across the continent. But Condor itself was the system of sharing information to hunt down opponents who had crossed borders. 
Amongst its victims were high-ranking officials, but also those who were simply caught up in the dragnet. El tema de, 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 de la figura del sobreviviente no es así, que es una figura bastante complicada, este, porque todo el mundo, es, la pregunta es de rigor, ¿por qué no te mataron a vos? Esa pregunta eh, fue la que llevé yo durante, y la sigo llevando, ¿no? durante 41 años. Julio Abreu es el único sobreviviente de lo que se llama Flight Zero. It was the first of the flights in which opponents hunted in one country were moved to another. I travelled to meet him in Uruguay. He had not been politically involved when he was kidnapped in Argentina with five others and then taken to his home country. Only he escaped the firing squad. For many years, out of fear, he remained silent. La muerte me corría de atrás y quería decir mi verdad. Necesitaba decir mi verdad. Después necesité sanarme yo y después ahí quise vivir. Abreu was released shortly after the other five prisoners were executed. He describes how he struggled with alcoholism for three decades after his ordeal. It was only giving testimony years later that helped him. His description of conditions he faced is at times graphic. He was held for 50 days, along with five members of the leftist Tupamaro organization, in three locations in Argentina, and then in this building in Montevideo, Uruguay. Nos dicen bienvenidos al Uruguay para introducirnos en una camioneta y llevarnos a lo que resultó ser este, la casa de Punta Gorda, el pequeño infierno. Me dijeron que estaba en el Uruguay y después me hacen creer que estoy en Argentina, me ponen Radio Colonia continuamente. No solamente la Radio Colonia era para, para decirme que estaba en la Argentina, sino para atenuar los gritos de los compañeros cuando eran torturados. There are still only theories over why Julio Abreu survived. The military in Uruguay, as across the region, has kept silent about when they ruled the nation. In Uruguay, rights groups still campaign for perpetrators to be brought to justice. Entre dos cuadras de acá se encuentra una de las instituciones que nuclean a oficiales retirados del ejército. Y efectivamente nuestra sede se encuentra en, a, escaso, a, a, a escasa lejanía. Este, pero bueno, es la realidad con la que hemos tenido que convivir en estos 30 años de democracia. Uruguay fue, en su momento fue el país del mundo con la mayor cantidad de presos políticos del mundo en proporción a la población. La tortura fue la metodología deliberadamente seleccionada por las Fuerzas Armadas para de, reprimir y destruir a las organizaciones opositoras. Y sin embargo en Uruguay hasta el momento no hay ni un solo militar procesado por tortura, que es, en el, es un delito de lesa humanidad. Y las víctimas nos cruzamos día a día con los victimarios en la calle, e incluso hasta las organizaciones compartimos el vecindario. Gastón Grisoni's smile is ironic. He's the president of Crisol, a group of ex-detainees. He was a member of the Communist Party. Carlos López, also there the day we visited the organization, was a Tupamaro, the urban guerrilla group former President José Mujica also formed part of. Both spent eight years in jail. In Uruguay, where victims say justice is slow, they hope the trial taking place across the river in Argentina will have a ripple effect for the justice system in their country. Of all the nations in the southern cone, Argentina is where most trials have been held after the country dropped amnesties for crimes committed during the dictatorship. The Condor is one specific and it's very important because the, the regional dimension and the political dimension. Gaston Chiria is the director of CELS, a rights group in Buenos Aires. I think it's very important to highlight that um, the, the comparative analysis between the past in the South America and some present in, in, in about I mean, how the idea of the fight against terrorism has been used as an excuse to, mass, to, to commit massive violations of human rights. This is uh, an important uh, difference between our past in South America in terms of the, how the uh, dictators, how our dictatorships behaved, and, and how uh, 
the United States after September 11, 2001 has reacted in the term of fighting terrorism. Rendition, torture, summary trials, Plan Condor has strong echoes today. La memoria no es para quedarse en el pasado. La memoria nos tiene que ayudar a iluminar el presente. Porque es a través del presente donde podemos generar y construir otra, otra sociedad. Human rights organizations in the region have long fought to bring to justice those guilty of crimes against humanity. Some of the military officers who oversaw Plan Condor have passed away. Others are now awaiting sentencing. The trial in Argentina is viewed as one important step to serving justice, as society says, never again. Mm -hmm.